Ooh, ah, oh, yeah, let's do this. Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome into another awesome Guest Blade video. Today we're going to be taking a look at GDS knives made by Seth Taylor. And we're going to be taking a look at the newest version of the Vipera. And this is an exceptionally made knife. As a matter of fact, I'm really not going to take a lot of time here on the intro. Because I really want to get down to the tabletop and, uh, and get some detailed shots of this knife. It is absolutely breathtaking. It's mind-blowing. It's, it's all those colorful words that you try to think of when you're trying to think of the most beautiful thing you've ever seen. And this certainly qualifies as at least one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Before I get into all of that, uh, yeah, the YouTube algorithms are still kicking my ass and my videos are going from tens of thousands and hundreds of thousands and even over a million views on some videos to sometimes barely getting three or four thousand. They're pushing me down. Um, they're demonetizing a lot of my stuff, which is why I've been talking about Patreon a lot. But uh, honestly, it, it's I hate to have to say it. It's such a YouTuber schmucky thing to say, but it's the truth. You have to click like on the video if you like it. You have to leave a comment down below to get that algorithm to kick up to share this video with more people. And um, if you're subscribed, that's great. If you're not, I'd prefer if you did subscribe. That also helps. But just clicking like on the video and leaving a quick little comment allows it to be shared with more people and my channel can continue to grow. Now, with that out of the way, don't forget you could join my Patreon, uh, five, ten, twenty dollars a month, whatever you want to do. And each level that you go up multiplies your chances of winning really cool stuff, including custom knives. Yes, I'm giving shit away for free because I want to thank you guys for supporting me. Now, with that out of the way, uh, we've had a chance to discuss Seth Taylor and GDS knives in the past. I've enjoyed every knife that I've ordered from him that he has made for me. I had the original Vipera. This is a completely different beast. And I've had a Lycodon. And i got to tell you right now, as great as they were, he has made a huge step up, a big level up in his skills that uh, when you see this knife up close, you're going to immediately see what I'm talking about. And it's not just the exotic materials. This could be done with basic titanium and carbon fiber, and it would still be every bit as impressive. The way that he's put this thing together, the way that he's designed it uh, is truly incredible. And wait till you get a chance to see that pivot up close and personal. So really, uh, besides that, and give you a quick thank you to Tim, I'll mention it again in a few minutes, but a quick thank you to Tim, the owner of this knife that paid a lot of money for this knife and had Seth ship it to me directly. He hasn't even touched, fondled, licked, or cuddled with his brand new knife because it's been sitting here at my house. So I'm going to be getting this out the door as quickly as I can so that he can enjoy his new baby. And uh, with that all out of the way, let's go downstairs and take a look at this close up and see just why I'm ex as excited. <laughs> see, I'm all tongue-tied, man. I can't talk. See why I'm as excited as I am about this incredible knife. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. This one excites me to an incredible degree. There's so much going on between the materials and the workmanship in this knife that it's utterly insane. So, quick review. This is GDS Knives, uh, which is Seth Taylor. It's a full custom knife. This model is called the Vipera. And in this configuration, as it was offered for sale... It was about $2,200. So certainly not an inexpensive knife by any stretch of the imagination. But you can very easily see where the money went. Now, uh, as I mentioned, this is a guest blade. The owner of this knife, the, the, the person this is uh, going to be shipped to, his name is Tim. And you can follow him on Instagram. His Instagram handle is toothpick3100. And uh, I have to thank him immensely, not only for his generosity 
in allowing me to receive his brand new knife before he ever got to touch it. But also with his patience, because I've had this for a little bit of time now, and I'm just now getting the free time to make this video. So, Tim, thank you so much. I really so much appreciate being able to share this with my viewers on my channel. Now let's talk about <laughs> the oh how exciting this knife really is. Let's get this bitch open. Oh yeah. Now what you're looking at uh, specs wise, overall length is eight and three quarters of an inch with a four inch blade, and I'm measuring that from the uh, end of the frame to the tip. And because of the large forward finger choil, that leaves you with a three and a quarter inch cutting edge. For those of you that are not so great at math, uh, I'll give you a size comparison here for scale. There you go. There is your banana for scale. So it is larger than my squishy rubber banana. I'm sure a lot of you are going to want to know the weight on this thing, especially when I start telling you about the materials that it's made out of. So let's get this bad boy on. And let's see, this thing is crazy hefty. 7.7, .7, my goodness gracious, 7.7 .7 ounces. Uh, that is quite substantial. Now, why is it so substantial? Number one, she's a thick girl. Yeah, look at that. The whole thing. Um, this is definitely over a half inch thick uh, from one side of the uh, frame to the other. So it's definitely got some size to it. But it's also the materials. Let's start with the inside. On this liner lock, your liners are blue anodized titanium. Moving outward from there, this section that has been put in, and you'll notice no exposed hardware. How friggin' cool is that? You can see the blued anodized titanium scale that's underneath it. Uh, this is blackened titanium that has a light stone wash finish to it. We'll get the camera to focus and you'll see the light passing across there. You can see the little flex in there. But this black section here, that's zirconium. And zirconium is rather dense. It is quite substantial, quite heavy. So that adds a good amount of the weight. We get up to the bolster. The bolster is, uh, I didn't ask Seth, but it's either Mokutai or uh, Timascus. Those are basically just proprietary names by two different makers of the same thing. It's a Damascus made of titanium. So whether I call it Mokutai or Timascus, it'll be the same very expensive, very exotic titanium Damascus material. And we get to the backspacer. The top portion is in zirconium. The lower portion is again in the uh, Timascus. And in between there is a titanium rod. Look at how that is put together, folks. That rod suspended in between those two different backspacer materials. We'll get to the pocket clip, which I love. I don't know if I can get really get a good close up of that or not. So my camera has not been wanting to focus close up lately, and I don't know why standoffs on the clip are phenomenal. It really goes with the theme of the backspacer and the pivot. That is also going to be Timascus. Looks fantastic. The backside is a mirror image of the presentation side with the same materials and the same patterns cut out. And then we get to what is really the showpiece of this knife, and that's the pivot. In the center, you have a blue anodized titanium pivot. Then you have a titanium pivot collar around it. I'm going to assume that the black is zirconium and that extra ring. Uh, it's either zirconium or it's black and titanium, one of the two. Then all of these individual, those are individually made, individually drilled, individually set titanium bars. This is absolutely one of the most intricate pivots I have ever seen on any knife at any price point. That is a true central showpiece for this knife. And that's not to take away from the beautiful blade, which is represented here in uh, CTS XHP Core Damascus. Beautifully etched, beautifully ground, uh, beautiful hand rub on there. It's a, there's a little bit of oil on there, so it kept some of the, 
the lint from the inside of the black pouch. But it is just gorgeous. Razor sharp edge done really, really phenomenally well. Uh, it's hard to see because of the pattern, but there is a uh, top swedge that's been ground into there as well. A little easier to see from that angle. Exceptional build quality throughout. And I think one of the things that uh, really needs to be focused on is the fact that the bolster, this black and titanium, and this zirconium is all attached to the blued titanium liner without any exposed hardware. This is a major feat. All of these individual components have to be uh, cut out and then ground and finished and everything individually and put together in this puzzle-like fashion without any exposed screws. We have two pieces of hardware on the back side. And then you have the... It's, I almost want to call it a suspended backspacer, but um, the way this has been done, it reminds me a lot of Todd Rexford's work, and that is nothing but a compliment. For those that don't know Todd Rexford, he is one of the premier knife makers in the history of knife making, and to get one of his knives, you're, you're basically buying at auction, like at a show, like Blade Show, and for work of this intricate detail, you're spending... Eighteen, twenty thousand dollars plus, and that's not an exaggeration. And by the way, using very similar materials, titanium with Timascus and zirconium, very, very similar uh, to the materials used here. This being, and I say only because I'm using that comparison, this being only twenty two hundred dollars compared to a Rexford, which even if you were somehow able to order from Rexford directly, which you're not able to. You'd probably still be spending five or six thousand dollars on it, and when it hits auctions, you know that's when they hit twenty thousand dollars plus very, very easily because they're so sought after. And I'm going to tell you right now, this is every bit as beautifully made. The detent is fantastic. The action feels so fast and so smooth. It just whips open with a nice loud thunk. As a matter of fact, I'm going to bring it up right now up to my microphone so you can hear it lock up. Oh, this is the kind of knife that gets knife collectors excited. If you've only ever bought utilitarian knives, you may only look at this and go, oh, it's, it's got pretty materials. You may not get as excited as, as uh, some of us knife collectors get. If you've only ever owned very, very, very cheap knives, $30, $40, $50, you're never going to get the appreciation of what a $2,200 knife will give you. This is in that upper echelon of knife making. Yes, it absolutely borders on uh, being an art knife, even though it has the overall design, <clears throat> excuse me, overall design of a tactical style flipper. And if you took away the exotic materials, which Seth is happy to make you a knife that's not as exotic and for far less money. If you just had a, an XHP standard blade, not a Damascus, and it was hand-rubbed satin, if everything on this entire knife was just titanium, it would look a little bit more uh, like that tactical style that you might be accustomed to seeing. But by adding these materials by fitting the, these materials together in the way that he's chosen to take the risk and do. And it, it definitely starts getting into being more of an art knife. When you look at all the bevels, the cuts, and the lines just in the bolster, I mean, that's a big risk. This chunk right here, if you uh, counted both sides, that's easily $500 worth of Timascus, or maybe even a little bit more because it's uh, very, very thick. And he's taking a risk by grinding these bevels into it to give it this unique shape. Same goes for the titanium here. Obviously, titanium doesn't cost nearly as much. Zirconium is pricey, and it's risky to work with. And he's still, you know, he's so he's coming in. Basically, that's like your plunge line on your grind on the blade. And he's creating this beautiful flat bevel across there. 
and it gives it not only a, an interesting look that catches the light beautifully, uh, but it feels really nice in the hand as well. And I got to tell you, for a knife collector, somebody that has a real appreciation for the artistry of making knives, yeah, sure, it's got some practicality to it. It's got a, it's got a great edge on it. It's a very useful blade shape. But for just the collectability, owning something that's unique, that's beautiful, that has obviously dozens and dozens of hours of workmanship into it, this is a grail knife. This is something that you would aspire to own. Maybe it's out of your price range, and that's totally fine. It's out of most people's price range. This is the kind of knife that you aspire to own, not only because of the price, but because of the exclusivity, the amount of time that it takes to make this. How few people in the world are ever going to own one of these? It's nuts. I also, I just noticed the, uh, the, the bevels, the scallops that are cut into the front of the bolsters as well. I didn't even notice that before uh, as I was handling this knife. There's, there's something beautiful to look at from every single angle. Now, what's funny is Seth took basically a year off. Whether he was making knives or not, I don't know, but he was not participating on social media. We did not see any of his new builds throughout all of 2020. And now he pops up and blam, there's this. All of a sudden, this just pops up on his uh, account. It pops up on my feed and I'm like, holy shit. And I very much wanted to buy it when he put it out there for sale as well. I really, really did. This is that special. I have owned his original Vipera, which is nothing at all like this. And that was a great knife. I had the Lycodon. And the Lycodon, I got to tell you right now, I did like more than the Vipera. The Lycodon, what an amazing, amazing knife. And uh, if I remember, I'll link to it down below in the description. You can watch the videos on both of those knives. Especially with the Vipera. You can watch it evolve from this original design to this completely all new design. This is an absolute stunner. And it's the kind of knife that no matter how many times you look at it, you find something new and interesting to ogle. And yeah, I'm going to go right back to that pivot because that pivot is something truly special. I don't even want to fathom a guess at how many hours went into fabricating all those individual components and then making it all fit really truly beautifully done um i mean I'm, I'm i'm almost without words let me take a quick look at something here yeah okay that was just my my thumbprint on the on the pivot i was thinking oh is that that side cut Timascus, and I didn't realize it because I saw like these little waves, but it was it was my thumbprint. Uh, my good God, absolutely gorgeous. So um, I feel extraordinarily lucky to be able to sit here and, and present this to you, uh, to hold it in my hands, to be able to play with it a little bit. And uh, it's going to be going back to Seth to then send to his customer um, for two reasons. Number one, um, Seth is wants to make sure that, you know, I didn't do anything dumb to the knife. I mean, I know he trusts me, but I mean, if I would have dropped this thing and put a nick in it, he'd have to fix it before the paying customer gets it. But also, uh, the customer is in Canada and you cannot ship a locking folding knife into Canada. So he has to take it apart and do things in accordance with the, uh, the import laws and all that kind of stuff to not make it uh, sketchy. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to feel sad when I box this up and send it back to him. Look at the the beauty of the finishes too, and I, I know I kind of glossed over that because uh, I'm so in love with the way that the knife was uh, actually put together. But when you look at the finish work, that clean satin on the blue anodized titanium liners, the clean work on the zirconium and the the black, the blackened titanium, uh, everything is just done pitch perfect. There's nothing about this knife that's undesirable or not special in some way, shape, or form. Truly beautifully done. Finished as nicely on the inside as on the outside. And the mystery, you know, the, the, the beautiful mystery of seeing all these components, one, two, three, and then four being the liner, all four of those components being put together with no external hardware, 
really just a, a genius um, a genius way of making this knife. So I'm very impressed. I've already discussed with Seth uh, about getting on his order books uh, to, to get one for myself because now that I've I've seen it in person, it is more impressive than in pictures. And I'm going to assume it's even more impressive than seeing it here in video. It's just one of those knives that once you've witnessed it, you feel this compelling need to own it. And man, oh man, uh, it, it is really something special. So again, to Tim, the, uh, the owner of this knife, thank you so very much for your generosity, uh, in allowing me to, uh, to, to get this before you ever got a chance to touch it. You paid a lot of money for this knife last month and, and here I am with it now and I'm going to get it shipped out as, as, uh, soon as tomorrow. Um, thank you so much for that. It's been a great pleasure, a great honor to, to be able to play with this. Uh, thank you, Seth, as well. And uh, congratulations to you, Seth, for really leveling up your game. I mean, the, the knives you were making before, there's nothing to nitpick. They were great. And now you've just taken that level uh, of perfection and just upped the ante and, and taken so many risks and done so many cool things to make this unlike any other knife out there. I just think it's fantastic. So yeah, this is a gushing, glowing representation uh, of this knife on video, but I can't help it. There's, I, I, It's hard for me to think of very many times in the past nine, almost ten years that I've been doing this that I haven't found something to pick apart to say, well, I love it and it's great, but there's this one thing I would change or this one thing that isn't great. I, I have nothing, nothing but praise and accolades for this knife. So uh, anyway, if you're not already following Seth, uh, please do so. GDS Knives on Instagram. Go see the body of work that, that he has uh, put out over the past few years and pay attention to what he's doing now and in the future. And with that, guys, I'm out of here and I'll see you on the next video.